Nice. Um, <clears throat> you you've created uh, something called the um, the Will Cajon Project, where you went to Africa, uh, the Middle East, uh, indigenous parts of Australia to learn to to learn your craft better. Um, what is the one thing, it, it, just in humanity, that you've learned, and in music, from that experience? Great question, and the answer is people. People. Pardon me. It's a great question, uh-huh. and the answer is people are people. Huh. That's what I learned. I learned that ten thousand miles away, um, in the bush, without cell phones, and you know, um, uh, uh, carpets and bedrooms and light lamps and lights. Actually, I found the Aborigines to be the most intelligent ever been around. Period. Um, um, that they're people. And they're super intelligent, and they live, and they have families, and they and they love, and they have. Was was any of you was um, were they ever really? Were they reluctant to let you in? Uh, some were. Um, in Mali, it took me. I always wanted to record and hang out with the hunters. The hunters' music is very special and it's old; it's just forty thousand years old, and um, it's blues based. And I was and I I was trying to get to this music for years, maybe about five years. But in this one village, I was going four times a year for three years. And finally, somebody just pulled me aside and said, "Yo, you go meet this cat over here." And that cat took me to etc. Et and you play with those guys, and they told me, "We don't even let Malians in." There's a six to seven step initiation process to get where you are today. I didn't ask him what it was because I didn't want to know. But, um, yeah, when they see that you're, you're not there to get field recordings and go back and, and pimp the culture, when they see that you're really a serious about things and uh, uh, talk about the way, that, okay, um, they just saw me there over and over again. And they just said, you know what, let's, what's, the, what's going on with this cat? And uh, a spiritual leader and and uh, a drum master wanted me to to to, to go to this village a musician, and I did, and that was the beginning of that process. But I've done that quite a few times. A lot of people are reluctant. Most of the time, when I go in, I go in um, with someone, with some kind of a guide or someone who's familiar with the culture, so they can know that I'm not bull, I'm not BSing, and I'm not trying to just scam and you know rob them of their culture. Or, you know take a sample and put it on a hip hop record or whatever. It's, yeah. it's way deeper than that for me. Um, I want to understand why, you know, my, the, a James Brown beat, where does it really come from? You know, Nigeria. And why is it, everybody likes it because it's a, it's, it's a festive rhythm. It's a rhythm that you play, you know, when your wife has a baby or when you get married or your daughter's going into, you know, the second part of life or whatever. So, I mean, people may not have to, may not understand and may not need to understand that, you know, those, the, his music, his, the rhythm in his music ancestrally comes from an insanely festive and happy place. That's why James plays, taking nothing away from James Brown as a, the genius that he that he was. Um, everybody likes that music. Nice. Everyone likes the music. The vibration of that music and where that music comes from is 100% festive. Yep. What the horns are doing, what the drum sets are doing, what the bass lines, take the notes away. The rhythm of what they're doing and the vibration of that is happiness. And and, and if you speak to any Nigerian uh, 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 musician, heavy one, that knows the history of that music, they'll tell you that. So there's a, there's, there's a direct spiritual connection to what James was doing with all of the success and brilliance. And that's why I was researching things. And I started to understand New Orleans blues and, you know, what Miles was doing with his electric band, more than me just being a fan of it, there is a serious context. I was in Mali, and an old 85-year-old balafone player guy told me how much he liked Jimi Hendrix. And I'm thinking to myself, well, what does this guy know about Jimi Hendrix? This guy lives in the bush. And, 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 and he said, oh, well, the band, the Gypsies music is Malian music. And I was like, oh, really? And he said, yeah. And he started playing me these folk Malian songs that are old as hell. And they had remnants of machine gun. They had remnants of who knows in that music. And when they heard Jimmy, they thought Jimmy was just trying to get to that. And for all we know, Jimmy could have been. We just don't know that. Mm-hmm. But it was really deep for this 85-year-old guy that it took me a while to hunt down. This cat knew Duke Ellington's music. 
Miles Davis's music, Coltrane's music. It's a very deep dude, and he, and and his, the village he lives in. If you saw it, it's dirt and small hut kind of houses. This cat spoke five languages. This is my point about people being people, and and um, you know how enlightening those journeys are, and how educational they are but also how balanced they are and how civilized and how you can, you think something is far away or someone's far away or they don't understand what's going on. And it's very, very, very clear. Everywhere I went, everywhere I went, I got lost a million times in the desert, flat tires, you know, ex exploding tires because it's so hot, etc. Every Berber, Malian, Moroccan, Tuareg person that I met always said two things to me. In 25 years of me traveling, or where are you from? And I would say, the States. And they would say, when you go home, say hello to Bob Marley and Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Those are the two people, every single old lady, young guy, whoever I talk, whoever I met, whoever elder, they would just, they would always say that. It's powerful, man. It makes you want to be that to the world, too. Yeah.